Hello everybody, welcome to uh, the SFL Playoffs. Um, I've got, actually got no idea how many games are going on in the SFL Playoffs. <laughs> uh, there are four, isn't there? Yeah, there must be four. There must be four. Because I'm playing Tom Schniz, Gadenik's playing Skuro in our division, and then in the other division, Flicky's playing Knight. Flicky is Bloodstep, which is this game right now. And then Chunter is in the other one versus... I don't know. <laughs> but um, there you go. Flicky also went Lizards. And also ran into the same problem as me, is that you actually just need to take multiple tackle players because everyone's got fucking L's. Which is a bit of a joke, but there you go. I didn't, didn't think about that. Like, Obviously, the way the rules set went, it made lizard men super strong. But it also, like, you know, everybody went elves. Literally everybody went elves. Well, not everybody, but lots of people went elves. So it's... Oh, Fantfox. It's Chunter versus Fantfox is in the other one, with orcs. So, yeah, so we've got this one, which is... Core Knight's Dark Elves versus Flicky's Lizards. Flicky won his division. Core Knight was second. Then in the EU other well, EU game, we've got Chunder who won his division versus Fanfox who finished third. And then in my conference, it's me first versus Tom Schneer's second and Gadenik first versus Skuro second. So there you go, that's the playoffs. So there's only, there's only like, what, seven games to do? Um... So these are like quarterfinals, aren't they? Then the semi-finals, then the, then the finals. Yeah, only only seven games to do. So I'll, I'll probably do them all live if I can. And if not, I guess replays. So there you go. What's happening? So yeah, Flicky's got pretty much the similar team to me. Loads of loads of uh, block, loads of guard, and then he's taken tackle because he desperately needs it. Um, I I mine slightly different. I have a mighty blow tackler, um, which is obviously going to make. It would have made a difference there. Boom. Um, but, uh, like, Flicky's basically got a better team than me, right? He hasn't got a mighty bow tackler, but he's got... He's got... An, his edge skink has got block. He's got a block step. He's got a side step. Diamond tackle. 12 players total. Six Saurus. And he's got Silly Billy, so... Cornite's team is insane. Insane TV. It doesn't seem that good. Uh, I guess he's got three skill blitzers. Blood step, blood step. Rodge step, leap. Oh god, the leap's going to be a terror versus skins. Couple of guards. Move up. Add up, mighty go tackle. 64 SPP. Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable, a lot of... Uh, I, the, the TV is, is outrageous, actually, on comments too. Oh, here we go. It just, just ignores the... Oh, wow. Nearly an effect from the elf grass there. Wait, what? Oh, has he got blocked? Yeah. Choose, Cornet choosing the push there to give, uh, to give Flicky another a free assist. <laughs> Not what I'd have done, but who can say if it's good or bad? Right or wrong? Risky, yeah, sidestep. A bit of a Thomas T sidestep. I don't really like uh, getting myself stuck in. I know you can't really get surfed with sidestep, but still, it just makes you dodge out harder, doesn't it, if you're trapped in a bit more. Oh, I guess you can push into the attacker, but I wouldn't have moved him. I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that. Oh, it doesn't even get to push it. The Dudley Death Drop. And now he's got 3D though for this, which is nice, isn't it? Wow. My favourite player, man. Ooh. Doesn't have guards. He needs he needs guards on the corner of this skink because this this witch elf can leap in, and this edge five can just dodge in. So it's you've got to keep guard next to it. 
I think. But I mean, this is so far away. Oh my god, diced. Oh, you can almost hear. You can almost hear Flicky's cries of despair. <laughs> it's just constant! <laughs> Every fucking time. Oh, fucking game with a fucking dice. I might foul. I might have fouled this one because he's got more assists. I might have fouled this one just for maximum, maximum flicky tilt. His uh, ad jump is getting nailed. Yeah. By tackle, not by mighty blow tackle, <laughs> just quietly. Oh, there's another mighty blow to got the arm break. It's funny because I would, I was I did the same as Flicky. I, I did just everyone block guard, and then um, and then I saw all of the teams that were in that were likely to be in the playoffs, and I was like, okay, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to change this to a mighty blow guy, and it took him so long. To get block. <laughs> and then... Because uh, he, he went mighty blow tackle and it just took him so long to get block. But now he's got a... Uh, now he's got block mighty blow tackle. It's, at least I've got something against the elves. But it's a real real tough matchup for the lizards. Especially when you get banged out. <laughs> oh... The double one? No, not the double ones. Tackle doing something. Not a lot. He's making him blitz back, I guess. Bit of an overcommit here from Cornite. Don't think he needs to be that much on the sideline. Oh, wow, he's going for the taggy. Taggy McTaggerson. Wow, flicky man. How are you, man? Just activate the Crocs, man. How are you, flicky man? <laughs> I guess he's going to block at the end. Oh, I tried to chain out his Saurus. That was pretty nice. Pretty nice move. Though I've got a non existent cage. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, this is risky. Maybe it's a t maybe it's trap space. I guess he has got diamond tackle on here, so it's, this isn't as horrendous as it looks. Oh, it's pretty horrendous, though. Not caging at all. <laughs> Was certainly a choice from Flippy. And like, there's not much you can do against this guy, but you know, you've got to do what you can do, right? Like, you have to do what you can do against that Ash 5 guy, and what you can do is guard on corners, and, uh, and really try your hardest to uh, not get shit on. <laughs> oh god. Oh wow, this is this is a shame that Flicky isn't streaming this because <laughs> we would <laughs> I'm sure we'd already have some amazing clips. <laughs> oh god. Oh my god. Wow. Wow 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 wow. I mean don't say it's over, but At least his Crocs is behaving. That's something. Okay, go for the dodge. Yeah. 
just going for the ball carrier dodge. I don't hate this. Like, you know, on the surface of it, yes, it's a terrible, terrible decision. But <laughs> you're in a you're in a terrible situation. So oh he's not sideline, he should have sideline caged this witch elf is here. This witch elf is here, Flicky. Um so yeah, it looks terrible. It looks it looks shit and wrong to to do a five plus dodge away with the ball, but you know, needs must, isn't it? That's the thing. Oh, he's not gone for the witch. Oh, he's gone for the witch. Wow, re-rolls it into dub skulls! Brilliant bait by Flicky there. Fantastic decision. Fantastic decision by Flicky there. And now he actually does have an all guard cage on turn seven. Oh baby. A bit lax from Cornite to not make safe moves first. I'm not sure Flicky's really <laughs> <laughs> Thought about this enough. It'll probably be okay. I much preferred an entire guard cornered cage. Um, pretty much in the same spot. But this should be enough. It's just the witch has got jump up, hasn't it? So it's it's a lot closer than it looks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI, GFI, yeah. So it's a 2D on the it's really easy 2D on the ball. Um which, you know, you shouldn't really allow an easy 2D on the ball when you could have just had a really, 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 really safe cage. Just my opinion. Who can say if it's right or wrong? A strength three. Oh god, he's got a strength three Saurus as Flicky. Oh yikes. I mean, it's fair enough. A strength three Saurus with Block Guard is probably better than a rookie, isn't it? Oh, Block Guard tackle. Oh god. Wait, no. Wait, where's the strength three one? That one. Okay, well, at least the tackle is in strength three. He's not even going for the hit. What a mad ass. You have to go for that, don't you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI, GFI. Like, that's super easy. Maybe he wants to keep the reroll for the one turn, but I don't think you're going to get a great one turn chance. I guess he's got move up, hasn't he? Has he got a sidestep on the move up? Instant send off on the farm. It's got an add up. Move up but no sidestep on the move up. It's still hard though, it's a really hard one turn. I wouldn't, I wouldn't care about the one turn. Oh, look at that, the fucking, the BM from Flicky. <laughs> Glorious show button. Ooh, Keoros, but he's got another chance. Really wants Slibly back. That's a huge Kaz as well, isn't it? Only badly hurt, but uh, brutal for the game. I think maybe it's best just to backline when you've got this few players. I don't think it's better to backline. I'm pretty sure it's better to backline when you've got this few players. I could be wrong. It has been known to happen. Very occasionally. I think one time back in 1995 I was wrong.
super interesting. Using the hole method. Not what I would have done. But who can say? If it's good or bad. Opening of the 1D. Not what I would have done. <laughs> but who can say if it's good or bad? Three, four, five, six, seven. So he does get a 2D here. Put him in there, push him to there, in, and then him to there, and him to there, and him to there. So it's very doable. What? He didn't, you don't need to do that, you loon. Oh my god, that's terrible. Oh my, he literally doesn't need it, does he? Or does he? Or maybe he did need it. Push him to there, then push him to there. Oh, he did need it, yeah, he did need it. Fair enough. Fair enough, he did need it. I was mistaken. Apologies to Cornite. Better than me. Doing the correct move. I mean, I wasn't really paying attention, but that doesn't matter. Congrats to Corne. I'm sure there was a better way to do it, but that was the correct move, I think, once he'd done what he'd done. So, Flicky on Ted? Eight strong boys and two shithead skinks. I mean, this is really bad for his skinks. This mighty blow tackle are hunting them down. Wherever he is. There. Uh, that's brutal, isn't it? Some edge five dodge. Mighty blow tackle is fucking horrible. You can just come for your skinks whenever he wants. Like a proper scaly. <laughs> So now we're live. Now we get to watch people think, which is, you know, I always think the best content you can possibly create. Just, uh, just watching people think, you know. Really nice. Really need to find something to do with my time when I'm, when I'm casting a live match, eh? <laughs> uh, Oh man, silly Billy! <laughs> nice 
nice star player, mate. Where'd you get him? The shit star player shop. Wow. Wow, that's fucking brutal, man. That's fucking brutal. Silly Billy played about two turns. Some blocks. <laughs> Rolls the one. Yeah, there's no pressure though. I think that's completely fair. And it was also completely fair to hunt the skink uh, a little bit. Not obviously not committing the big boy. You don't want to send your big boy off on a. Totally unsupported like that would be terrible. A nice player to hit would have been killed with mighty blow. Just saying, Flicky. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, my mighty blow tackle is going to do absolutely nothing in my playoff game when I lose. Fuck off, Jimmy. Hello, Goliath. Fwa. Fwa. Really tricky for Flicky now to protect these shithead skinks. Jimmy G's the Crocs, glorious. Jimmy Skinktastic is one of the shithead skinks. Lovely. The bread skink. Super skink was Moradam. Oh, I'm sure Jimmy Skinktastic is going to win it for him. It's the only thing that makes sense, isn't it? Is BB crossplay? Yes, uh, Stato. Whenever you play it, you get very cross. Hey, hey, hey! Banta! Um, no, it isn't crossplay, no. And the new one won't be either. Though they want it to be and hope it will be. So. You know, that means it won't be <laughs> if you've got <laughs> if you've got a normal working brain. But of course everybody on the Blood Bowl 3 Discord is like, oh, may maybe it'll happen. Maybe there'll be crossplay. Maybe. May oh yes, look, they've said they want it to be. Oh yes, it's it's gonna happen. It's good definitely gonna happen, guys. There is a three coming, yes, on the twenty third of February. There you go. So not long to wait. Very exciting. Maybe that's an over. Oh, wow! He rolled a one and cast himself. Glorious tackle. Tackle is, to be fair, these two tackles have been good for Flicky. Even though uh, the mighty blows haven't been. Like, he hasn't got any mighty blows. That is a date they said. 
I think I think they will release on the twenty third of February. Like now, now they've really said it and they're really doing it. I think. However, of course, if they don't release it, um, you know, yeah, this is like this is much more final than the previous ones that they've said. Twenty third of February, twenty twenty two. Hello, Kurgo, glories. Well, yeah, well, you've come to the right place, Stato. If you want to. <laughs> I can't help laughing at Stato, holy shit. What a legend. Um, yeah, you've come to the right place. I'm the best. I'm the best. And, uh, you know, we'll be making much more guides and coaching and everything with Blood Bowl 3 coming out. So there you go. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be, it's going to be perfect timing and the perfect place for you. There you go. Just as soon as I conquer my Battle Brothers addiction. No, I've conquered it, to be honest. I'm just I'm just being a dickhead playing Battle Brothers all day at the moment. I'll stop that soon enough and then focus on the Blood Bowl stuffs. Is Flicky gonna come for the ball come for his balls? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good thing, Leet. <laughs> Thanks, lad, yep. <laughs> yep, that is the highlight. Store store endorse my Imperial Nobles guide, so that that's it, you know. When when store is looking at my Imperial Nobility guide for advices, that that's brilliant, you know. Store is really, really good. <laughs> Blood Bowl's a funny game. Blood Bowl is the kind of game where people make it like the one game they play a pretty a pretty high amount. It's I don't know really anyone that plays it very casually. Well, I mean obviously people do, but like people people in the community are generally very Blood Bowl focused. In general, I don't think that's a too much of a generalization. Well, it is a generalization, but <laughs> that's the thing with generalizations, isn't it? Of course, they're not going to be universally applicable, but I think in general, mostly insane, yeah. Exactly, Samage, right? Exactly. Someone as good at Blood Bowl as Store looked at one of my guides. And went with it. I mean, what bigger endorsement can you have than that, honestly? Yeah, that's fair enough, Kurgle. It's like it's like eye racing and stuff, isn't it? You know, you play that uncasually, don't you? If if you like, if you do a casual bit of a, or, or a set of course or whatever, if you play that a bit, hey, Kurgle, hello. If you like, if you play that kind of thing casually, you're gonna be pretty fucking shit, aren't you? Unless, like, your day job is an F1 driver. <laughs> in which case, in which case, you'll, you'll still completely dominate, obviously. Oh, here we go. E instant 2D on the ball, but without tackle. Oh, and actually, not hard to get tackle unless he's out of range. Out of range of the tackle, but this one can hit without tackle. Or he could just go for the 5 up. The 5 up is pretty mental. Um, I don't think he can do any crazy. Oh, he could. He could. He could chain. Could he chain him? Fill in these two, block the block their chain him under there, block him, and then get the hit with the crocs. So he could I don't know if he fills in those two slots. If he would have then he then he could dodge with a skink and then have three D on it. So he could he could make it a three D if he if he set it up, which I'm not sure it's worth doing. Well I'm sure it's not worth doing in fact. I'm sure it's not worth setting up. I think I might prefer just doing the block with the crocs first to set this hit up. So you've still got the blood step skink to react because now even if you power it's not even that good. Maybe you don't even hit the ball now. That, that's how bad I think moving the skink first is. 
obviously if you activate the skink if you activate the crocs and you go stupid it's terrible you know and if you one in nines is terrible so i certainly understand not activating the crocs here it's definitely the the safe sensible play to not activate the crocs don't think about it flicky <laughs> what now you've moved the skink you, you don't activate the crocs 100 percent 100 percent well you might not even blitz the ball here but then he's already moved his tackler so Oh, he's sidestep. He couldn't do the chain anyway. He's got fucking sidestep. I didn't even look at that. Brilliant advice there from Jim. <laughs> oh, well, it's it's nice that you can enjoy your game while being shit stat. Oh, I I personally can't. So I I generally play things, and if I'm shit, I stop playing. Them. <laughs> is uh, is how it works for me. If I'm not instantly the best, I give up. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I'm abnormal in that regard. But I really can't. I really struggle to enjoy games that I'm shit. At. I can enjoy games that I'm not good at, but I really struggle with games I'm shit at. <laughs> God. <laughs> Good. Oh, it doesn't take the dodge off there. Not sure about that. Not sure about not dodging that skink off. Giving a free hit with block. And also, that was the thing. The problem with the blitz is, like, you're fishing for a pal. You can't pin in the sideline or anything because you'll get surfed. And he's got sidestep. So, like, you can't really do anything with the blitz unless it's a pal. And now that he'd activated the blood step stink first, he couldn't even take advantage on a power so <laughs> you know it's alright though two 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 dark elves down it's not the worst for Flicky now but it's it's looking pretty grim isn't it like how on earth is he gonna stop him scoring he's gonna need a a timely snake from Cornite Ah oh, thanks very much Lord what a lovely fella. Hello, if I'm here. I don't always pay attention to the game, but when I do, I'm a great blood ball commentator. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Kaelon and Fymir in the house. I, I, honestly, guys, I would, I would go on, I would go on comms if you want to join, but uh, I just don't really want to. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of hate wearing the headset, to be honest. Like the Jermaine genus of Blood Bowl. Wow, that's. Uh, Not the most complimentary thing. The the funny thing is, this this is the funny thing, right? I think Danny Murphy is incredible. Danny Murphy is the only person, the only football commentator or analyst that has ever said anything that a normal person wouldn't know. Like just a normal dude down the pub. He is literally the only person ever to have said anything that anybody didn't know, ever, in the history of commentary. English football commentary. In American football commentary, Tony Romo is the only person to have ever said anything that a layman wouldn't know. There's literally two good commentators in history, one for American football and one for football. The thing is with Danny Murphy, he's boring as fucking balls. That's the bad thing. The bad thing about... Danny Murphy is, he's just the most boring fucking man on the planet. But, he does say some intelligent things, which is nice, isn't it? Whereas Tony Romo has, has got it all, hasn't he, really? Tony Romo, what a, what a fucking guy. I tell you what, I'd bank him. He is. He's a fucking lad, isn't he? Like, imagine being... Like, Tony Romo, oh my god. What like, like what an actual god. 
Like Tom Brady's like okay, you know. Tom Brady all right, he's tall and you know, but he's like he's just he's just a fucking knob, isn't he? Like he's a bit of a knob. You know, okay, like he's great at American football. Like he is the greatest of all time and everything. But like he's just a bit of a boring ball sack, isn't he? You know, works hard and succeeds. What a dick. Whereas Tony Robo's just a fucking lad, isn't he? Oh, did he really sang it? Uh, are you are you an elf coach, Helamis? <laughs> because this is not a this is not a this is not a good matchup for the lizards. Especially when they get silly billy banged out instantly both halves. <laughs> I can't believe he's done that much TV. And he would be down more if he'd replaced his block guard minus strength, dude. Oh god. Calcium has got old. Ah, right, right. Right. I thought you meant like this season doing commentary. I haven't really watched much NFL this season. Despite despite winning the uh, Jack Bull. Hello, Jack Bull, by the way, as well. Despite winning... Despite winning the Jack Bull Elliot Cup... Fantasy football. The one time I've done, I finally got to do fantasy football in my life. Ah, oh, dominated. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> well, Shredmeister Flex. Obviously, it happened later in the season, and he's block guard. So, a block guard strength three is better than a rookie strength four. Is obviously Flicky's thinking, and it's hard to argue with that, isn't it? If you had a elf and you could choose block guard or plus strength for like one game, there's a ver there's a very strong argument for block guard, isn't there? So, uh, yep, I think that's kind of fine. Cry Eagles cry. <laughs> the common edge one elf. Yes, that's true, that's true. The uh the edge one You know, lack of mobility, you can argue for strength four. Um but then also he's got plenty of strength four on the team. So the guard like adds to that, doesn't it? And because he's got guard the strength three can still hit. So it's interesting. It's super interesting whether to keep him or not. I, like, I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's, you know, completely moronic to keep him or anything. Like, the, the only strength down players that I'd definitely keep are uh, Natties and Claw Pommers. <laughs> like, somebody, I think it was Lupak had a strength 2 Beastman with Claw Pom. <laughs> and he couldn't get rid of him because... He's still strength three on a blitz, isn't he? Like, it's not the worst. And he piled on. So he blitzed every turn and he piled on every turn. So it, it actually wasn't. It was more like he lost horns than like he lost strength, you know? As stupid as it sounds, it was more like he just lost his horns than that he lost his strength. It really, it really was. It, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't even that bad. And everyone laughed at him, and I was like, "Actually, that's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty all right. It's not even that bad. It just means, you know, he's, he's like turned himself into a storm vermin, right? And people like storm vermin claw pommers. So, Flicky hasn't done much in the way of defense this this half. Like he hasn't generated any pressure, but like it hasn't it hasn't been easy to. You know, I don't. I'm not blaming Flicky for this." Uh, it's going to be a very easy score for Cornite unless he fucks it up or rolls badly. But at least Flicky hasn't lost his skinks. And he's got a chance of getting another skink back. And if he wins the toss, he's got a very good chance, hasn't he? So maybe Cornite should have been more focused on trying to kill the skinks. <laughs> when there's only two on the pitch, it's, uh, you know, and there's a good chance. Like, overtime is the best case scenario for Cornite. Um, that's important to consider, isn't it? <laughs> yes, like this is the thing. It's not as if killing, you know, targeting skinks is just the worst thing you can do. It's just an idiotic uh, tip for new players. 
That's the thing. All these one line, you know, g give me some advice for this, and then they just give you a line. None of those help. Not like none of them help. It's it's just stupid. If you can't do something basic or whatever, or like a fundamental thing, getting a line, <laughs> getting one line in fucking Blood Bowl Reddit is not gonna make you a competent player, is it? Like you just need to understand the game more. And then it'll be better. Is the ball safe? Yeah. <laughs> All my strategies from Blood Bowl Reddit. Yeah. I mean, there is one worse place to go. <laughs> Without being mean. It's not even worse. No, Blood Bowl Reddit is probably the worst. Just because you don't know who anyone is. Like, I've never understood, like, people asking... People, you know, asking for things and then they say great advice thank you and it's like you don't know if it's great advice <laughs> you've just asked for the advice <laughs> you can't say it's great advice <laughs> you know it's idiotic isn't it like like if I say I don't know how to cook scrambled eggs and then somebody says stick a fork in your eye first oh thanks that's great advice <laughs> I'll try that <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, Cornite's got himself into a little bit of a pickle. Flicky has to be tricky about this. I think just putting this Saurus here is good enough. Keeps the screen with the other Saurus. More like a Cadbury's cream egg, really, Helamis. <laughs> oh man, I haven't had I haven't had tour soldiers in ages. I'm gonna have tour soldiers today. Oh, oh, I think, I think, this could have been a bit of a mistake from old, from old Flicky here. Oh, that block was bad because it gives him the hit on the skink. Oh, I don't like that. Okay, he got the power ball. Look a dog. Look a dog, Flicky. He doesn't even follow. I think you do the hit to follow there. But again, he, you can follow there, right, if you've got this guy here. Because then if this guy is here, he's stopping the reverse. Flicky's looking pretty weak to this guy. If he, okay, he doesn't, he doesn't power and follow. Um... Like, it's not easy, but he's looking pretty weak to reverse here. Maybe he isn't, because there are only two turns. Maybe this is fine. But he's done a good... Like, he's done a good job overall, because this isn't this isn't easy for Cornite now. I think Cornite got himself into a pickle himself a little bit. Obviously, I guess I guess it, it takes a bit of both, right? Like, to get into a bad spot. I always wonder, when I get into a bad spot, have I played shit, or has my opponent played good? And I guess there's a little bit of both involved in, in that, isn't there? Like, maybe if Cornite had played better, he wouldn't be in such a shit spot. And obviously, if Flicky had played worse, he wouldn't be in such a shit spot. So there's definitely... There's definitely... Bits from both, isn't there? I don't really know what the answer is here. Maybe just give it the edge 5 and fuck off. Can the edge 5 get 3? 1, 2... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, GFI, GFI... 
No, he can't get clear. Oof. Three plus, no dodge. Look how much better it would have been if he'd followed that hit though, right? Like this this would have been harder. Not that much harder. But harder. It wouldn't have been that good. He's just gonna dodge through tackle, but he can't score. This is rough. Yeah, the uphill was really good though. The uphill was really strong because it just moves him. Like you just need to move the skink. You don't need to power anything. You can just uphill it and and uh, and get it, and then you're through. Oh, he's rolled a one. A double one. Oh, the crowd goes wild. Flicky stops shouting about dice. <laughs> nah, only joking. <laughs> Flicky wouldn't stop shouting about dice. Oh, right. Well, this is brilliant. Didn't even stand these guys up, so there's another free Saurus to swarm the ball. Needs this knockdown. Do this block first. Then uh, hit this and re-roll for a pal. Stand up the skink later. Move the other guy later. Oh! Oh, that's rough. That might have been a re-roll. Honestly, that might have been a re-roll. Because you just need a push. Oh, and this block was bad. It lets him free again on a push. I wonder now if you just uh, if you just go full damage control. <laughs> I play on Xbox. Oh, no. <laughs> just block this guy. I don't like doing this one first. It's kind of irrelevant. Maybe he's thinking about whether... Like, do you blitz this guy without tackle? Or do you, um... First, he's got sidestep. Do you block this guy first with a tackle? Maybe he's block this guy first with a tackle. See what happens. Ugh. Yuck. And actually, so this guy could come back to here. And this guy could blitz the blitz the guy. That's That's pretty nice. Problem is you leave these two totally free, but that's pretty good because then you get him controlled a bit more. Or you could just jam in around the ball. Like either's fine. Maybe you blitz with this guy first and then see what. So you blitz with this guy, see if it's a pal. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I don't like this. Do I not? Like I guess it gets the crocs in. Yeah. Okay. He gets the crocs in. Maybe. He maybe gets the crocs in by doing this. And getting the crocs in is... Do you GFI with the crocs? The crocs there is like... Way better. <gasps> Bonehead! See, now he'll complain about the dice now, Flicky. you got to re-roll that, by the way, Flicky, mate. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, this this guy's edge five, Flicky. <laughs> Just quietly, this guy's edge five. Oh wow! Oh man! Now do you do the five plus dodge out? But then you you've got no protection. Oh no! Oh no! No, you can't. You had the ball in a blood step, but like you have to make him hit you because the edge the 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 tackler is the recovery as well. Anyway, you have to just stand there and sidestep to here when you hit. Oh no, oh Flicky, oh no, oh no. Um, elf grass has not made a difference in all cheer five. Oh, I think you've got, you've just got to keep it. You just got to keep it there because he's only got the one tackler, and the one tackler is the guy he wants. He wants to pass it, and and also you left him out because you didn't move that guy back, and you didn't move this guy, and I mean you can blame the dice in that he he chose to rely on the dice by relying on this crocs here. Um. But yeah, that, that dodge, I didn't like that dodge. I didn't like that dodge. 
I really did not like that dodge. And I, I really like moving a guy back here. And I like blitzing this this guy. Yeah, there's been a bunch of shit dice, yeah. I mean, this is looking really easy for Carnine now, isn't it? One, two, three, four, lob it, score. You can even, can you punch him? Oh, you can, oh, it's a bit dodgy though. So if you push him, it's into an uphill, isn't it? Does it, gets the wrestle. Worth. So now it's just two, 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 two. Some twos. Oh, you can even blitz this guy. You can even just blitz the uh, Saurus, can't you? Oh, yeah, this one better because he's got tackle. So he goes and blitzes him. Yeah, that's lovely. Lovely play from Cornite there. Lovely play from Cornite. <laughs> Glorious by <five eight>. me. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> it was a great clip. I realised, I, you know, I could have trolled through and got things that weren't in clips, like the Swarm Lord story, but I've literally got no idea where the Swarm Lord was, you know, like, so I just did it from clips. But yeah, the Y was a pretty good one. Can you just hand it off here? That's better. Oh, no, it's double GFI. Double GFI is better, because you can re-roll the GFI and you can't re-roll the intercept. So that was technically incorrect by uh, Cornite there. Now, okay, he does get us. He does get an SPP, and you can't die on the pass. Um, but the G, the double GFI was higher odds. Full show. Full show, higher odds. What is the difference? Shall we? Uh, shall we somber it and find out? Let's go to somber. Um, so it's a 2 plus patch and a 2 plus catch with a 6 plus intercept. So that's 77.1. No, 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 2 plus catch. No, no, it's just a 2 plus pass and a 2 plus catch. Yeah, yeah. So, 77.16, or 86.8, .8. so it's substantially, substantially higher odds, like half as likely to fail. Um, what am I doing that? He can't make it last another turn, it was his last turn, um, he had gone first. So that was his last turn. So there's no way to stop your opponent getting the last turn of the half if you score on your drive. Um, I didn't see a skink in the way of the double GFI, no. I didn't see that. Uh, are we yeti? Oh, yes, he wrestled him, didn't he? Of course, he wrestled him. Well, there you go, then. Thanks for proving me wrong. God damn it. God! Try and commentate on one game and everyone tells me how fucking shit and wrong I am. What a fucking joke. <laughs> so there you go, completely correct player by Cornite because he couldn't double GFI handoff. <laughs> Who has shitty blue elf grass anyway, honestly? <laughs> Three sidesteppers. This is, uh... This is not easy, is it? To the point where I wouldn't even try, and Flicky isn't trying. I guess you could try for a quick snap. We'll find out, Kalon. We'll find out. I I'm still of the opinion that everybody who thinks it's good is shit. <laughs> so, you know, we'll find out if I'm wrong. <laughs> Just one of those things, isn't it? You know, like if you think if you think thick skull and a thrower is wrong, I just think you shit at blood ball. No, no offense, Rick. <laughs> that's, that's like that's like the litmus test is is just like you know if, if just I'd, some things are just indefensible, and my opinion of you goes down if you if you propose it. And you know, I do think I don't think Rick is shit at blood ball, but. If he legitimately thought 
thick skull was the best choice for his role, then that is shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just, that's just, it's just wrong. <laughs> that's just wrong. If you take it for the memes, fair enough. Which I'm sure he did. Oh. Well, there you go, there's a Kaz. Well, nice, nice sidestepper, mate. Where'd you get it? The shit sidestep shop. No, honestly, MA up on trolls isn't that bad, especially if you've got on a goblin team because then you use them more. So like, this genuinely not that bad. Like, what you you only get like guard, stand firm, break tackle. Like you don't you don't get many good choices. So yeah, I take you know I take MA up on things. Yes, exactly, Muppet. Yeah, that was the funniest thing. Yeah, yeah, that was the funniest thing. Yeah, on a six four. Yeah, on a double five, I wouldn't take movement. Here we go. Who wins the toss? Whoever wins the toss, Silly Billy's back. Good chance of winning the game. Whoever wins the toss. It's obviously more favour to Core Knight if he wins, but if Flicky wins, he's got a good shout. It's you. I don't know who you is. It is Flicky. Ooh. Well. This is more this is more interesting. I think it's almost automatic if Core Knight wins. Because he's got like, you know, elves and <laughs> Blodge and Edge 5. But with Flicky, he's got strength two ball carriers versus edge five mighty bow tackle elves. So I think this is a more interesting drive with Flicky winning. For the neutrals. Yeah, I just I just saw Rick in the chat list, that's why I said it, because I, I wondered if he was here so he could respond. <laughs> but um no, that's true. I you know it's uh like I, you know, I don't know until 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 I play with animal savagery. Like the examples of it are like kind of the examples of why people say break tackle on Saurus is good, right? Like to my mind, like I just don't care about the once in a blue moon, where I really want to activate. But it does. See, Core made a good argument. Core made a good argument for animal savagery in that. When you one turn, you can one turn with your roger with Juggernaut, and it will work, right? That's great. That's a great fucking thing for Animal Savagery. And in that contest, Animal Savagery shits on Wild Animal, and it's actually amazing for the consistency of the Skaven one turn. Now that is a real argument, right? That is a real argument. That was great from Core. Everyone else is just like, oh yeah, but it's really good, you can activate him. You can activate him, and it's like, okay. I don't really care. <laughs> but, oh, okay, the, yeah, really, really, uh, really, Im really impactful on the one turn is an actual good argument. So, and and that might be just it, that might be enough by itself for Skaven. You know, and even Underworld as well, right? You can use it on Underworld. You can use it on Underworld for the one turn because they've got a gutter now. So, but not on uh, Chaos Pact. <laughs> Then it's shit. <laughs> and for most turns, it's going to be worse than that. For most turns, it's going to be worse than Wild Animal. But one turn consistency with multiple rerolls as well. Very, very good argument there. Where's the strength three one? Is the question. It is the strength three side. Diced. Yeah, no, it's sad, isn't it, Kim? It's really, it really is bad. You know, Rick's murder tendencies. <laughs> Stupid Crocs. Do you blitz over here to bring him over? Probably. I think that's probably the correct play. To be fair, I would probably block him first, because there's a lot of value in blitzing this guy. You probably block this guy first, see what happens. Because he can get, he's moved seven anyway, so silly but he can get over quite far anyway. To here, can he? Yeah. It's funny that I never count squares, but just know how far things are. It's fucking bad, isn't it? I think I would definitely base the ball there. I think I would definitely put him here. He can't get served because there's no witch elf. Just cast him. Yeah, so he is. Uh, he probably is going to use the blitz to get to get that guy over. But that's the problem with Salibel. He's only one square short, so it's not even that good getting this guy over. Don't say it's over. <laughs> he can go there. Oh, so he can go there. That's a great place to stand. So even if you dub skull, you're fine. Because you're probably going to eat the dub skull at this point. 
So going there is really nice. And then probably move him over here. And then blitz him and then move. Yeah, okay, blitzing with him is fine. The problem is he's a tackler and now he's stuck on a non you know non dodge. Oh man, I was the best. I was the best at estimating well cannons. I didn't I didn't actually estimate artillery, I never played Imperial Guard. Um Oh no, they were I did actually I did I did estimate artillery in 40k because of D cannons. D cannons on Eldar. Um So there you go, there's a lie for you. I did. I did estimate artillery. Oh, and also there was basilisks. Yeah, I had basilisks actually. I did play Imperial Guard. I, did I, I never played Imperial Guard, but I do have an Imperial Guard army. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had an Imperial Guard army with uh, three, three Lehman Rus and uh, a basilisk. A Lehman Rus demolisher. I think three Lehman Rus demolishers. I had a lot anyway, I had an armoured company, I don't know what I had, I had a lot. I had a lot. Yeah, I was really I was really good at guessing. Particularly cannons. Cannons I was incredible. Because cannons were like really long range and really precise, weren't they? I was spot on with cannons. Fua. Cannons in Warhammer. I was the best. So yeah, funnily enough, they they made cannons a lot better in 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 Warhammer by just you just pick where to put it, you just pick where to aim. But like it was kind of a nerf to me <laughs> because I could do I could do that within an inch every time anyway. <laughs> but you know that inch could make a difference, couldn't it? You know, like I think you had to guess eight inches to the head of the guy you were landing on. I think that's correct. I think that's correct. I can't remember. It might have been. Six. I think it's eight inches to the head of the guy you were aiming on, and uh, and you know, <laughs> hey, <laughs> and you didn't always do that, right? Sometimes you'd guess like seven away or nine away, and uh, so you're not always eight spot on. Whereas now you're always eight spot on, um, so it is. It is better. Warhammers, yeah. Yeah, me too. Start all but not. I didn't have a chaos rolls. I had. I had loads of armies. I. I was an idiot. I was an idiot. Not much of it painted, but you know, I didn't really spend money on anything else. So it wasn't too bad. I guess it's not like I'd be a millionaire now if I hadn't played Warhammer. <laughs> Just you look at all the money spent and you think, God, what a waste of money. But it's not really, is it? At the end of the day, if you enjoy it. Really wants to, uh, you probably wanted to Vengabus this just to protect the other skink, like you don't want the skinks getting picked off at this point. So, he's already done goofed a little bit here, I think, Flicky. I really do think putting the skink in here and bringing this guy back was better. Yeah, I saw. I m most of my stuff I threw away, honestly, which is terrible, isn't it? This is terrible. Most of my stuff I just threw away, and then some I gave away, and then some I've sold, and then some is in the attic. <laughs> yeah, I still got all my all my blood bowl stuff. I kind of wanted to collect everything, you know, like a bit like, a bit like. Um, Oh god, who who is it that collects all of the things? He's posted loads of them in my Discord. Rolex, isn't it? Rolex. Um a bit like Rolex. I wanted a bit of a Rolex collection at one point. <laughs> Don't we all want a Rolex collection? No, but Rolex the Blood Bowl coach. I wanted a collection like him <laughs> at one point. Um not like not as many as him, but like you know, just like, you know, basically every every official team. And, and then like some kind of ones a little bit different just to, for my taste but um, then I didn't <laughs> and also I didn't paint any of them, I painted some of them but not a lot I made a custom stadium and everything but then I, re I realised that just I didn't play anybody on it so it was all just a waste of time so I don't know, I guess I'll sell it all at some point 
this is the obvious guy to go through if you can pal him. So we might see some some rowdiness. <laughs> That's amazing, Kalon. <laughs> Because he can grab, he can grab this guy, which is quite nice, and he grab him out of the way, and then he can uh, blitz him with tackle, see if he gets a pal. I'd have actually waited and then blocked with the crocs to free this guy as well. Come hard down the flank. <laughs> but Flick, he's not doing that. He's blocking a non-dodge piece with his tackle piece, just so I can say piece a few times. Yes. Yes, he's got like 300. Whereas I, I have got, I've got about 20, I would say. I've probably got about 20 teams. I don't know, maybe like 16. And I'd probably want about 30. 32. I'd want about 32. That's how many I'd want. Then I could have the full, the full NFL in, <laughs> in Blood Bowl form. But then what would be the fucking point, you know? That's, that, that was the big thing for me. After I built my stadium and I played one game with my mate who was moving, moving away, and that was the only game that I played on it, I thought, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, so then I then I have so I've got one I've got undead for tournaments and wood elves for tournaments, but then wood elves are a bit shit now, aren't they? Oh, he did a one D blitz instead. Well, it's not what I would have done, Flicky, but who can say? If it was good or bad. That's his last re-roll. When the ball was totally safe. Oh dear. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> the oh no clip was great, wasn't it? Oh no. Oh Flicky, that was really bad. That was really bad. Oh no. My very first painted team. No, I mean, God knows. I don't even know what it was. Oh, probably the box, probably the box set, um, you know, the Blood Bowl 1988 box set. Um, I did paint them. I did paint them. I don't know. Oh, do you know what I did? I, there, there, was, there was rules for, uh, there was rules for allied teams in, in one of the journals in Third Ed. So I, I used, I used an original Blood Bowl second dead guy is the driver of my death roller and I, I scratch built a death roller <laughs> for my human team so because humans could ally with dwarves so I allied I allied with a death roller <laughs> and I had I, I did do that so I might have that but I don't think I've got any of my uh, any of my original second dead things anymore tragically not really tragically again it doesn't matter does it Still got a high elf team, a uh, high elf, sorry, a high elf army. Still got a grey knight army. Still got an, uh, a necron army. But loads of I did. I saw my uh, eldar army, which at least I got something for. But wow, silly Billy has either been stunned, stunned or KO'd every time he's been hit. Indeed, Fymir. Not just a disgusting power gamer at all, you understand. To be fair, High Elves were shit in Warhammer. I just like I just like them. I literally just like High Elves. I literally just like them. I, I got Warhammer, you know, like with a box set with uh, Elves and Goblins. High Elves and Goblins, Eltharian versus Grom kind of thing. And, uh... So... So I think that, like, you know, probably because it was my... My first thing into Warhammer. That's maybe why I like High Elves. But I, mean, I just like I just like High Elves. Whereas the Grey Knights was completely power gaming, <laughs> just complete, absolute mega power gaming. And saw so the Necrons as well. Flicky really fucked this. I, I, my I don't know what his play was trying to achieve, but my play was way better. Like I'm sure my play was way better. Not not being big headed or anything. Like I'm just. I'm sure that you know he one dice blitz used his last remaining reroll on it, so it's not it's not a big statement to say my play was better, but for sh I'm sure mine play was better to to blitz that blood step with tackle, see if you power him. If you power him, you can move down. If not, you can just stay where Flicky stayed. It was relatively risk free. 
Hello, Steve. Yeah. I started late but caught up to it because I. Uh, no, it wasn't. Wasn't the fastest game ever. Like, not particularly slow, I guess, because they are in overtime, but. Oh no, it's actually kind kind of slow, isn't it? Because yeah, they started they started early. Oh yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a slow game. Yeah, <laughs> yep. But hey, it's the SFL playoffs. The most oh man, Flick, Flicky's rolled a lot of ones on his boneheads. The most prestigious league in Blood Bowl two. I don't know when Tom and I are playing. Um, to be honest. <laughs> I might not want to play on the weekend. Um, we'll see. Like, obviously, I might have to play on the weekend if he can't play any other time. But I'll do what has to be done to make the game happen. UK BBL style. And then the one time that I don't, I'll get banned. <laughs> not bitter and twisted about that at all, of course. I'm not, actually not, I don't give a shit, but <laughs> it was funny. He could crack this cage, couldn't he, here? With that bonehead, but it's not easy, because you have to put in two. Or just uphill it. You could just uphill it. See if he uphill power, but he doesn't want to, he just wants to stay in the way a little bit. Like that's a kind of a chunter thing, right? Chunter would want to uphill him and then hit the ball, but like it's kind of stupid. Like I'm not saying Chunter would do it, but he'd want to do it. <laughs> that's a sort of and and you know so the fact that Chunter's always looking for those players occasionally. There's times when it's it's not as bad odds as you would think, and then people are like, "What a dice lord!" But actually, he's just doing. He's looking for it all the time, and he's doing it when it's not bad odds, isn't he? But this is so that, you know. I tend, I don't look for them as hard as Chunter, but you know you've got to look at these things because you can still have like you know just because you play mostly conservative, it doesn't mean that you don't see the players. You just write them off as too risky or whatever. Do you shoot a play, guys? <laughs> I rather really, like you should look for you should look for like Chunter style players even if you don't do them. Hardly ever. You should still look for them. Dodge Garda exposed. Tackler available. But there's no progression there. Again, I really don't hate just going for this blood stepper. If you get the power, you, you're through. I, like, I just don't like this. From, I guess this is what Flicky's going. I think Knowing Flicky, I think this is where he's going. Especially as the Crocs has gone in. I think you just first action blitz this guy. Blitz this guy from here. If you get the pow, you're down and through. It's not trap space. It's literally not trap space. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you get him down, the ball's here, and it's in range of scoring next turn. But now the Crux is in the wrong place to do that, so now he's probably just going to blitz this guy. So I think he should have gone for it last turn, and I think he 100% should have gone for it this turn. I think this is an incredible opportunity for Flicky. Oh wow, he's not blitzing the dodge guy. Oh, I guess this gets this gets uh, silly Billy into into uh, significance, relevance. That's what I was trying to say. He couldn't move the ball here, but that's too exposed. He can't move it there, so he can't get in range this turn. Running out of time with no rerolls, and it's going to be really hard because he's, you know, he's almost certainly going to be able to get diamond tackle on the ball on like the big turn, which is another reason to blitz the diamond tackler previously.
Hmm. Yeah, the problem is like Flicky does need like he doesn't need a lot of penetration, but he needs some. And that horrible, that horrible one D blitz. That he didn't even have to re-roll is the worst thing. Like the ball was safe. He's gotta get he's gotta get five in. And now obviously call night. I guess the the more turns you you like you know you probe, the more chance that your opponent's got of making a fuck up. But I thought he already had. I thought both times I blitzed the sidestepper holding the flank, and see if I roll a power. I I thought that was completely fine to fish for a power in those situations. I like you know I don't think the positional cost of those blitzers mattered. <laughs> I gonna push. It was fine. Oh wow, Cornite's rolling some dice. Wow, he's going. What's he going for? It doesn't matter what he's going for. He's double one. <laughs> and there you go. So it pays off brilliantly for Flicky. Now he gets downfield. Gets downfield for free. Gets to probably hit him with mighty blow tackle. Not mighty blow tackle with just with tackle. But just definitely move the ball first, screen him, and then do everything else. Uh, I am lizards, Tom is wood elves. I was gutted, Kalon. Uh, J5 went an amazing run to, uh, to qualify, and then fucked it at the end. And had he not fucked it at the end, then, um, then I would be playing Chaos without piling on. <laughs> And chaos, I'd be pretty confident of beating Chaos without piling on with Lizards. I think he only had one claw. So, like, you know, really not really not threatening. Obviously, I can out-muscle him, out-guard him. It was pretty, pretty one-sided the, the other time we played. Like, we played in the regular season. It was pretty one-sided, as I, as I would expect it to be, really. Like, I think... I think chaos without planning on it. They're just not consistent. Ob obviously, they, they can get lucky, right? Obviously, they can get lucky without piling on. But piling on is the consistency. And, and without that, they're just not that scary. They're really just not that scary. Um, but wood elves are fucking terrifying. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's the thing. There's no real counterplay against the woodies. It's just and fucking he's got a mighty blow tackler and I, you know it's just it's just horrendous. It's just there's almost no way I can beat Tom. Oof, J five. I am the fifty percent. This is a blitz from from a. Uh, see, I didn't like that. I didn't like that hit because I don't think we really achieved anything. I'd much prefer to do this hit. And then, uh, and then free the tackler. You know, like he could have, he could have hit with the other people. Free the tackler, and the tackler could have nailed him. Because this guy is going to come around and get your balls. But well, I guess you've got guard, so it's only a one. -er. Go there, right? Move it, move it, move it. And you could go there. I don't know which is better. This is two, this is three. Probably better to go the extra one on the sideline. And then also a uh, block with the crocs. And then if it's a power, you can move that guy in to, to seal the bottom. Because this is the... Also, you can hit from the top now as well. So you, this is actually really weak. This is actually really weak from Flicky. It's way better to go there. It's way better to go the sideline. Because the edge five can, can come in now and it's a 1D. And it's easier, like the, the Edge 5 comes in on a on a 3 plus for a 1D, whereas if he's on the sideline, it comes in on a 4 plus for an uphill. I guess he comes in the back if he's there. So maybe it doesn't matter that much. But now it's easier for him to get the hit. Yeah, that's really, really bad for Flicky. Gets away with it though. Look a dog. Look a dog. 
That was an absolute mistake. Like, it's more rolls from to get the seal off the back and dodge in the back. And a harder dodge still. That was just absolutely, unequivocally incorrect from Flicky. <laughs> but obviously no blocks now with no re-rolls. Turn 23, just move slibly out of the way. And a glorious win for Lizards against Elves. Down TV, you love to see it. Let's hope that's repeated. <laughs> <laughs> Later on in the SFL playoffs. Lebred skink. Yeah, that was, that was a funny game. There's some wild wild rolls actually, some critical some critical snakes. Um for the L's, which is what you need. Like you can't you basically can't win if they don't critical snakes. And uh yeah, only seventy four percent. And, uh, of course, Flicky's block dice weren't that good. His bonehead was bad. But um, there you go. Interesting game. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.